How's it going, guys? So this is a very challenging 2CK level cardio slash palm slash path question. I know many of you are studying for step one, but if you can hit a 110 mile power fastball in a batting cage with a hard question like this, then it's very easy to hit the more basic cardio questions that are maybe 85 mile power fastballs, okay? So uh, why don't we just hop into the fucking question here and uh, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it and give the video a thumbs up. So we have a 32-year-old dude. He has worsening shortness of breath over the past four days. At the age of three years, he underwent a successful repair of a VSD. He's a non-smoker. Pulses are regularly irregular. Physical exam shows peripheral cyanosis, mild peripheral edema at the ankles. Lungs are clear to auscultation. A three-on-six pan systolic, a.k.a. holosystolic murmur, auscultated left sternal border. And the question's asking the most likely explanation for these findings, okay? And we have uh, various answers here. Challenging question, as I said. Now, where to unpack this? The VSD is uh, what we auscultate as the pansystolic murmur here at the left sternal border. That's not hard in and of itself. If you're studying for step one, yes, you need to know your murmurs, okay? He underwent a repair of the VSD at the age of three, and you say, hmm, that's fucking weird. Like, if he had it repaired when he was a kid, why would he have a VSD now? I know, slightly weird, but it's not my opinion that matters. It's what the NBME exam wants, right? Because that's the USMLE. So apparently, in theory, uh, just because you've had a, a, a congenital heart lesion repaired uh, doesn't mean it can't open up as the heart grows. He's a non-smoker. That's important info just as far as uh, the lungs um, and any pathology we might consider in that regard. Pulses are regularly irregular. This is a nice detail. Okay, This is where uh, we could argue it's 2CK level. That's atrial fibrillation. And if you have uh, volume or anatomical changes related to the heart, okay? So because we have an anatomic disruption here with the VSD or an, uh, an anatomic abnormality, uh, that can be an etiology uh, for AFib, okay? Uh, just like we can have other etiologies such as hyperthyroidism, but that's the relevance of the AFib here, all right? Perioral cyanosis, this is a key detail. This tells us that we are hypoxic. It tells us that our shunt across the VSD is right to left. That is the key detail here because a, a VSD in and of itself is gonna be left to right. Obviously pressure on the left side of the heart is greater than on the right side of the heart. So VSDs will start off left to right, but our perioral cyanosis tells us we have deoxygenated blood from the right side going to the left side of the heart. Um, so we have Eisenmenger syndrome. That's what this detail means. The peripheral edema at the ankles tells us that we possibly have core pulmonale. In fact, it does tell us that we have core pulmonale. Actually, that's incorrect for me to say that because core pulmonale means we have a pulmonary etiology, such as fibrosis, cystic fibrosis, uh, COPD, that causes right heart failure. So it's more correct for me to say that we have peripheral edema as a result or secondary to right heart failure uh, that ultimately stems from this VSD. And I'll explain right now. So when we have a left to right shunt across a VSD, as I said, that's how they all start. That extra preload coming into the right ventricle, it's going to go into the pulmonary arteries. Okay, it's going to the lungs. Now the lungs say, fuck, we have all this preload. What are we going to do? The arteries are going to constrict to compensate in order to limit that blood flow. But when they constrict to compensate, that causes pulmonary hypertension and actually an afterload that goes back onto the right ventricle. So this is a little bit confusing, right? Because a VSD starts off as higher preload on the right ventricle coming from the left ventricle. But this ultimately results in pulmonary hypertension that creates increased afterload on the right ventricle. And that's why we ultimately are getting right heart dysfunction and the peripheral edema here. So this question is asking the most likely explanation for these findings which is, you say, well, what findings? Uh, I mean, it's Eisenmenger syndrome, okay? The periwell cyanosis. We have a patient who has Eisenmenger syndrome, and the question wants to know why, and the answer is increased pulmonary arterial resistance, okay? You might say, well, isn't there increased arterial blood flow uh, through the pulmonary arteries? Absolutely, okay? But that in and of itself is not the cause of the Eisenmenger syndrome. The cause of the Eisenmenger syndrome, as I just fucking said, is when the pulmonary arteries constrict to compensate to limit that preload. And in turn, it causes afterload back onto the right ventricle, right ventricle hypertrophies, and it can push the blood back to the uh, left ventricle, okay? So that's high yield for step one as well, knowing that Eisenmenger syndrome is due to 
pulmonary hypertension, okay? The pulmonary arteries are going to constrict, and then that's the starting point for when the blood, we have that afterload, and the, the shunt will reverse itself. We could make this an extended clip. I know you guys don't want to see a 39-minute YouTube clip here, okay? You know the deal. I'm going to continue to produce more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.